Hi friends, I'm Pearson Cross. Welcome to the show. We are going to interview some mayoral candidates and today we have Betty Ward Cooper who is running for mayor of Monroe. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's so good to have you here. Um, could you tell me what, what led you to run for Monroe mayor? I mean, that's not something that people just get up in the morning and say, oh, I'm going to run for mayor. So you must have been either thinking about this for a while or there was something specifically that led you to run for mayor. I always, you know, have had that servant spirit within me, you know, trying to make it better for others. And I've, I, I see a need for stronger leadership. Uh, because I, I, you know, in communicating with our citizens, they're, 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 they feel that their voices are not being heard year after year, decade after decade. Things that they're concerned about are not being addressed. And so uh, I felt the need for stronger leadership, so I stepped up to the plate to, to uh, bring about the changes that are needed to improve the quality of life for all of our citizens. So it's a focus on quality of life and improving that for citizens. That's correct. Okay. Uh, what's the central theme, if you had to say, of your, of your campaign, of your candidacy? If you had to say, well, here's my central theme. My central theme is this. I call it unification. Unifying our city. Because it's been divided far too long. And um, because of this division... It's cost us, and, uh, you know, it's really crippled our potential. We are uh, very diverse in this city. All of the cultures are represented, and I've seen a lack of inclusion, and, um, and uh, uh, so we must bridge this gap, and we also need to begin working more uh, collectively and inclusively together. Mm -hmm. to bring about um, the changes that are needed. So I, I do see where the current administration and past administrations, they have not been working together uh, in this capacity of inclusivity. Could you uh, maybe sketch that out a little bit? Because uh, I was about to ask you what policies of the current administration would you like to change, amend, or undo? So is there are there some particular areas where you're thinking about? Well, I, I'm, I'm just thinking about we just have to respect every individual and respect their differences and, and appreciate what each one of them bring, will bring to the table. And so we can come to the table working uh, collaboratively. Uh, and decide on uh, what we think is more important and bring about those changes together. Okay. Uh, is there a particular area or particular uh, neighborhoods that you feel like have been left behind and, and need to be included or, or something like that? Are you thinking about this regionally? Well, well I'll, I'll start right here in our own city and not as, as opposed to regionally. Just one thing came to my mind just a moment ago as I was coming over about uh, the lack of public transportation mm -hmm. because a lot of our citizens, we want them to have jobs. A lot of them don't have transportation. So when they cut back on the public transportation hours, not offering that night shift where they could go to work and then catch the transit bus and come back home, uh, that was neglect to me because we want everybody working and uh, uh, if they had to pay for an Uber driver or ca uh, a taxi cab to come back home, that's probably all they made that night. And so that's one thing mm -hmm. right off the bat. Okay. Yes. Um, another theme that's come up from listening to mayoral candidates has been uh, the theme of crime and preventing crime and dealing with the crime that's here. Uh, do you have some ideas about what you might do, want to do in that direction? Yes, I do. And it's a solution we feel very uh, uh, encouraged uh, with. And that is, because of the crime problem, because our city is ranked number fifth in the nation as far as violent crime, and number one in, in the, as, as a city in Louisiana as the most violent city. And so we must address the crime problem. And uh, we are proposing a community policing model and that's where um, 
law enforcement agencies and the citizens of that community work cooperatively, collaboratively, together. They become partners, mm-hmm. a team to, to reduce this violent crime. It's working over the nation, top uh, organizations, law enforcement organizations. They are certainly recommending it as well. So if you were elected mayor, what's the most important thing you think you'll do? Well, I'll tell you what. Really, there's no one thing I'm committed to over another. But I can say this. um, I want to bring our city together to make it safer and... uh, and, uh, and, and prosperous, you know? Our city can be that, that, that model city. I'm confident of that. And so I'm on a mission to guide Monroe toward a more vibrant, secure, and prosperous city. I'm very hopeful for the future, and I'm very confident we can do this with the items that I've listed in my platform. So I'm dedicated to bringing this about with the help of the administration and our citizens together. And uh, we all, we've got very people down here in Northeast Louisiana. And we know with God, all things are possible. That's right. And so I'm very, I'm very confident. So I'm gonna be um, uh, deeply committed to, to the welfare of our youth. You know, uh, yes, because uh, a lot of our young adults are committing crime. Mm-hmm. And uh, crime is being committed on them. And so we want youth development programs that are all year long, and we're going to put a million dollars in our budget to churches and nonprofits and other social organizations to bring this about. It just got a few seconds left. Encapsulate, tell me why people should vote for you. What, What would you say? Well, I maintain a strong optimism that we can overcome these challenges. That's one thing. You know, you have to believe that that this can be brought about, and I do believe that. And so I'm looking to the future and uh, embracing new and strong leadership. You know, uh, we address the concerns of our citizens as opposed to special interests, you know, and... um, And I'm just really enthusiastic about that prospect. All right. Well, thank you. We've been talking today with Betty Ward Cooper. Thanks for coming to the show. Thank you.